So we were talking about Proverbs, eh? Thinking about wisdom. The Bible's full of full of wisdom. Where's Proverbs? Where's Proverbs? Just before Revelation, eh? <laughs> okay. Proverbs chapter four. I'm gonna read verse five. It says, Get wisdom. Look at the person next to you and say, Get wisdom. Get wisdom. Get insight. Do not forget. Do not turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, her being wisdom. Do not forsake her, and she will keep you. Love her, and she will guard you. Wisdom will keep you. Wisdom will guard you. Verse 7. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Turn to the person next to you again. Say, get wisdom. And whatever you get, get insight. Tell the person, get, get insight. Prize her highly, and she will exalt you, and she will honor you if you embrace her. She will place on your head a graceful garland. She will bestow on you a beautiful crown. That's the promise of wisdom. And I was just feeling this week like that we, we as a people, we really need to go after wisdom. We need to be a people who do whatever it takes to become wise. Um, that verse 7, it says, the beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom and whatever you get, get insight. The Passion Translation says it like this, wisdom is the most valuable commodity, so buy it. To buy something, you have to have something. It's going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something to buy something. Wisdom is the most valuable commodity, so buy it. Revelation knowledge is what you need, so invest in it. How are we doing with our investing in wisdom? How are we doing with our buying of wisdom? Is this something that you and I have thought about recently? Or has 2023 just come and gone, woof, and we're like, oh. I forgot to invest in wisdom this year. There are many things you need to invest in. You need to invest in, in relationships. You need to invest in your children. You need to invest in your parents. You need to invest in your, your friends. You need to invest in your workplace. You need to invest in your future. Whatever it looks like, there are many things you need to, need to invest in. But we need to invest in the most important thing, says these verses, and that is wisdom. It's the most valuable commodity. Invest in it. it the, the NIV says it like this. The beginning of wisdom is this. Get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have. Everyone say all. Even if it costs you and me everything we have, this is the thing we should go after regardless how much it costs. We go after wisdom. Amen? Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. So the question I asked myself when I read these verses and thought about this is what has wisdom been costing me this year? What does it cost me? It's a great question to ask yourself. What does wisdom cost me in 2023? What does wisdom cost me? Have, have I paid a price for wisdom? Wisdom will cost you your time. Anything valuable comes through time. You don't just, you don't just step into valuable things. You don't just step into valuable relationships. The things that are important and valuable in life require time. You and I have 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week, 52 weeks in a year. And we all get the exact same amount of time from God. So when someone says, I'm too busy, well, you've got to kind of evaluate where you're at in life if you're too busy because God gave you enough time to do what you and I need to do. God, God gave us the exact same 52 weeks, the exact same 24 hours, the exact same seven days in a week to get done what he has called us to do. And so if we're too busy, then something is wrong with the way in which we're, we're handling our lives. That was a side point. The main point is this. In that time, are we investing in wisdom? Has wisdom cost us time this year? Have we taken time to get wiser? Have we taken time to, to grow in the wisdom of God in our lives? Wisdom will cost us money. If it, if the verse said, yeah, if it costs you everything you have, have you, paid, have you physically paid anything this year to get wiser? You might, well, what does that look like? Well, it could look like buying someone a coffee and saying, I need to learn from you. So often, so, so often, people want to be learned from, but they don't want to learn from. Does that make sense? People want to be learned from, but they don't want to learn from. 
Wisdom could cost you the cost of a coffee. It could cost you a meal, having someone come over because you want to learn. You and I want to grow. We want to get wisdom. It's going to cost us something. It will cost us our ego because you realize you don't know it all. The more we learn, the more we realize how little we know. The more mature we become, the more we realize, you know, when, you, when you're a little child, you, your parents kind of know everything. And then around the time that you turn two, it used to be when you turned 13, but now when you turn two, your parents don't know as much as you. And uh, one of my children, I won't mention any names, told, asked, asked the other day, said, am I your slave? <laughs> <laughs> that was my reaction as well. And then there were some serious consequences afterwards. <laughs> as a matter of fact, yes, you are. Right, let's go. <laughs> so you turn some age in those early years and you're like, your parents don't know very much. And then you get to, to a little bit of an older age, you know, as you enter high school and so on. And uh, your parents know very little at that stage. Then as you leave school and you go out into the big wide world and, and life starts to happen, you start to realize, maybe my parents knew one or two things. And uh, you get married, maybe go, oh, don't get married, whatever it looks like. But you carry on with life. And as you get a little bit older, you realize, oh, my parents knew, they, they, they were quite wise. There was, there was some, some experience that came with life. Now, that might not be true for every single person, but it's true for many people. And... Uh, there is something about as we get older, we realize how much less we know than what we thought we did when we started out with life. Wisdom will cost your e ego. Wisdom will cost you and I. It will cost us awkwardness. I, there are many things I could mention. I'm just mentioning a few things. It will cost us awkwardness. The awkwardness of pressing in for wisdom and not going after the general status quo. You know, there's a certain way of doing things in life. There's stuff that's portrayed to us in media and on social media and so on. There's a, there's a way in which we're meant to respond to situations, even global events happening around the world at the moment, the way in which we handle cultural issues and challenges. And, and uh, there's a certain response that's kind of an accepted response. But if you're going to go after wisdom, you might, you might find yourself in awkward situations. The wisdom that comes from God is very different to the wisdom of this world. So wisdom will cost you in our awkwardness. It's, it's, it's an awkward moment where you go, I would love to handle this the way I would love to handle this. But I'm going to step into the awkwardness of discovering what wisdom looks like in this moment right now. Wisdom will cost us bravery. We have to be brave to step into wisdom. It requires backbone. It, requ it requires tenacity. It requires going after something even if you're a little bit afraid. I'm going to be brave enough to find the root of wisdom. Not the easy path. Not the... Not the, not the easy route that just seems, that, that's just much more comfortable. That's the comfort zone space over there. But I'm going to go after wisdom. I'm going to go after wisdom. You, uh, I'm going to mention, I'm going to talk about three things now. But obviously the Bible is full of wisdom. And obviously what I'm saying is we get into the word of God. We read the word of God. We ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the word of God to us. We start to understand things. We understand that Daniel in the lion's den is not just a Sunday school story. There's truth and richness in it that's meant to change our lives and how we approach life. When David goes after Goliath, there's something that's meant to happen on the inside of us that rises up where we step into the wisdom of what God is wanting to teach us through that story. Does it make sense what I'm saying? When we read how Jesus handles people, we re see how the early church did what they did through the book of Acts. There's a wisdom that you and I can glean for how we're meant to do life. But in, do, in going after everything the Bible has for us by the power of the Holy Spirit, it's going to cost us time and money and awkwardness and our egos. And it's going to cost us bravery. We're going to have to step into spaces that are not comfortable for us. Are we willing to do that? We, we should be willing to do that. Are we willing to do that? What does it say in verse 7 again? Though it costs you all you have, go and get it. Though it costs you all you have. Though it costs you your ego, though it costs you your reputation, though it costs you your time, your money, and your awkwardness, go and get it. Go after it. Pursue it. The end result of it is this. You will be highly exalted. You will be honored. You will have a graceful garland on your head. You will have a beautiful crown. That's the result of saying, I will do whatever it takes 
to get the wisdom that God has got for me. Amen? What is wisdom costing you today? So let's change that to next year, 2024. We are four weeks out from 2024. We've got the 10th, the 17th, the 24th, 25th. We're going to have a Christmas Day service here. And we're going to have the 31st of four Sundays left in this year. Four Sundays plus a Christmas Day service. Five more times for us to gather together in 2023 is over. And then we start with these New Year's resolutions on the 1st of January. I'm going to lose 55 kgs. I'm going to stop eating spinach. I'm going to drink more coffee. Whatever it is that you are making as your, as your New Year's resolution. The ones that we all threw away about the second or third week of January earlier this year, right? Um, whatever you do and however your plan is and however you approach the New Year, I really, really strongly want to encourage every single one of us. Put into your plan, put into your purpose for 2024, I'm going to get wisdom whatever it takes. And then make some decisions about what that's going to look like. Maybe it's going to look like I know somebody who once a week meets somebody at, and has a coffee with them, not to tell them how amazing they are, but to sit and to listen so that somebody else can share with them the wisdom of their life. Maybe it's going to look like that. Maybe it, you, you think of 12 people in 2024. You say, I'm going to buy that person coffee and then that person coffee in February and that one in, in March and that one in April, and I'm going to make time. I'm going to make time. It's going to cost me time. It's going to cost me my ego because I'm going to actually listen for a change. That was, I don't know if that applied to anyone in this room. Hopefully. Um, so, and I'm going to sit and I'm going to ask great questions. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to write on a piece of paper three questions. And then I'm going to pay for their coffee. And I'm going to ask them these questions. And I'm going to wait and listen for their answers so that I can get wiser. Wisdom. I'm going to go after wisdom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go after, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to maybe read through the book of Proverbs. There's 30, how many chapters of the book of Proverbs? 30. 31. 31. So it depends on which month you choose, you can do a chapter a day, okay? Um, and, or you can read it in a week. But whatever it looks like, get into, uh, spend some time and say, okay, I'm going to read through the book of Proverbs. Then jump from there and go, go jump and find a, find a book in the New Testament, maybe the book of Acts. It's a great book to read. I'm going to get the wisdom from God that is found in the book of Acts so that I can be everything he's called me to be as the church that he is building on the south coast. I'm going to get wisdom. I'm going to, I'm going to say yes to whatever. Maybe it means I'm going to join a life group in 2024. I want to get wisdom. I'm going to become part of it. I'm going to find, I'm going to make space. I'm going to make time so I can do the things that are important so that I can get wisdom in my life. And then maybe look, looking back on 2023, just think through the areas where you and I didn't make such great decisions. Okay, my hand's up. I, there were some decisions I made. They were not great decisions, right? Anyone made some bad parenting decisions recently? Both my hands. <laughs> A good pastor friend of mine told me the other day, he said, don't worry, you are messing your kids up. I was like, thank you very much. <laughs> So that's all okay because God's going God's to sort it out. It's going to be okay. Um, he didn't quite mean it quite as strongly as what I've just said. It. That's, those were his exact words. Those are exact words. But you have to understand context to, to understand that actually there is God's grace. And there is his ability in our lives to, to do things. But, you know, um, we, we, we all do our best. But there are areas that we, we, when we look back, we recognize we could have done better, right? Anyone think you could have done better in certain areas of your life? Those are the areas where you stop, you pause, you say, okay, cool, I'm going to spend some time with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to say, in this area of my life, I want to get more wisdom. I don't want to get to the end of 2024 and be at the same place in my life. I'm going to invest now so that I can reap the reward, the, the garland, the crown, the, the life on the other side in a, in a year from now. We should be getting wiser year by year, not dumber. And the more you invest it, it's like it's exactly the same as the way finances work. If the more you invest, there is compound interest that comes. Imagine getting three or four years down the line and you're 10 years wiser. There's plenty of uh, moments in Scripture where, where it talks about wisdom beyond your years. Timothy, wisdom beyond, beyond your years. There's, there's a wisdom that comes that's beyond, that, that's, that's greater than what you should have at the age that you're at. That comes through investment. That comes to whatever it takes, I'm going to get it. Making sense? Okay, you can say amen, ain't I, ouch, I disagree with you. Whatever, it, just so I know you're here in the room. Okay. Wisdom positions itself before Jesus. 
Wisdom positions itself before Jesus as the way of life and the way to life. And I want to just talk about three practical things directly connected to Jesus that will help us grow in wisdom this year because he is the source of all wisdom. Amen? Three positions for us if we are to grow in wisdom. Before I say that again, I want to just, before I say, I want to just again say, what are you and I paying right now? What is the price we're paying right now in this moment to gain wisdom? I'm not talking about sitting in this room. I mean, in this season of your life, this moment in your life, the, this December 2023 moment of your life in my life, what are we currently paying right now to gain wisdom? And if we can't think of anything, let's go home, spend time with the Lord and say, I, 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 I want to start paying a price for wisdom. Okay, three positions for us if we are to grow in wisdom. Firstly, associate with the learner, not the learned. Associate with the learner and not the learned. When we associate with the learners, the learner, we we associate with the learner, then we encounter Jesus as our teacher. Unfortunately, there's too many, I think there's too many Christians walking around trying to be the teachers and not allowing Jesus to be the teacher in their lives. The more we position ourselves as a learner, so that he can teach us, the more we'll have something we can actually give to those around us. Some people have a lot of words that come out of their mouths, but there's very little that they actually have to give others. You can speak 5,000 words, maybe only three words is something that actually made any sense. But when you spend time with Jesus as the teacher, you can speak five words and every word counts. Some people love the sound of their own voice and they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk. Have you ever been in that situation where you say hello and then you weren't able to say much more? <laughs> Unfortunately, that's, that position is the position of being, I'm the lear- learned and I'm going to teach you. And then you find yourself stuck. This wasn't quite the position I wanted to be, to be in, but I'm kind of landed in the situation. Have you ever done that slow trying to walk away from a story, from a conversation? And you're like, and eventually your wife's pulling you and kids are tang- and the person carries on. You're like, I don't understand how I'm the only one seeing what's going on right now. (laughs) If we want to grow in wisdom, we need to associate with the learner and not the learned. Encountering Jesus as the teacher. The attitude, the heart attitude on the inside of every one of us should be this attitude of, I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to grow. I want to learn. I'm going to ask questions. I'm going to listen. James so James 1, it is. James 1 verse 19 says, Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and then slow to become angry. I don't want to talk about the anger part. I want to talk about the quick to listen, slow to speak part. We, that, we, that we are quick to listen, slow to speak. Quick to listen, slow to speak. If we position ourselves in that way in life, in the way we deal with people, in the conversations we have with people, we will learn and we will grow. And if you make a deliberate decision, I'm going to grow in wisdom, you'll become a person who's quick to listen and slow to speak. Amen? Secondly, associate with the lost, not the legalists. I'm trying to use the L's here. Did you see the L's? It's clever, hey? (laughs) Thank you. Thanks for that encouragement from Noria on the front. Associate with the lost, not the legalists. There's two groups of people in the Bible that Jesus was dealing with. He dealt with the lost, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was going after the lost sheep, but he also dealt with the legalists. Who did he have time for? The lost. Who did he not have time for? Who gave him a hard time? The legalists. Eventually, he tells the story about the prodigal son. He says, he says the prodigal son, he, he talks about the older brother. The older brothers, the, oh, those, those were the legalists. He's, they, knew, they knew what he was saying. He, that he was saying, I'm going after the prodigals. You're older brother. You're not, you're not, willing, to, you're not willing to let the, your, your prodigal brother come back into the fold. And they did not like him for that story. Jesus was known as, where does it say in, in Matthew 11 verse 19, it says, The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look at him, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is justified by her deeds. Jesus, the one who was perfect wisdom, associated with the lost. The lost didn't mean he became lost like them. He associated, they wanted to be around him. 
There was something of life that emanated out of him that they wanted to be around it. But he got the accusation of, oh, you're, a, you're just a glutton and a, and a drunkard. That was the accusation that was leveled at Jesus. Are you and I prepared to pay the cost, the cost of our reputation by associating with the lost? I didn't say becoming like the lost, but associating with the lost. There's some situations that you can find yourself in. I was in one um, a, a little while back where I didn't have to even try to be a Christian. It's just obvious. You know, sometimes you can walk into a place where there's, there's quite a lot of darkness. And like, it, you just, it just, you're just different. Anyone know what that feels like? You just, you're just different. You're not trying to be different. You're not trying to like put on anything or do whatever. And, and no Christian should ever try and put on anything anyway. It should just be who we are in Jesus Christ, right? Um, but you, I just found myself in a situation. I went, it's just, it's just an obvious situation. It's like, it's like you stand out like a sore thumb. And I thought about it in that moment. I was like, I, I would like to be in more situations like this. I'd like to be in more moments like this. Because that's the moment where we get to show people the light of who Christ is. That's the moment we get to encounter Jesus as Savior. There are some, there are some situations, people that you and I might know, that you think there is no way. This person is ever going to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Those are the exact situations and moments that Jesus is a professional at. He's known as the Savior. We're encountering Jesus as the teacher. We want to encounter Jesus as the Savior. I want to encourage us in 2024, associate with the lost. Associate with the lost. Let them see the light of the world shining through your life and through my life. Amen? Think of that beautiful story. I won't read it, but it's in Luke 19. If you take your notes, you can write it down. Luke 19, 7 to 9, where Jesus um, is walking down the road, and Zacchaeus, a really short tax collector man who um, was not liked by very many people, but he's so short he can't see Jesus, so he climbs a tree. So Jesus stops underneath the tree and says, Hey, Zacchaeus, how's it? I'm coming to your house for lunch. Now, first of all, I would have fallen out the tree because I'd be like, How does he even know my name? Um, anyway, he climbs down the tree and he goes to the house, and Jesus doesn't. In nowhere, Jesus extends the, such incredible grace to Zacchaeus. He comes, he dines with him, he eats with him, and then Zacchaeus, out of his own, complete transformation, starts giving back to people everything that he has taken and stolen from them. And not just how much they had taken, he gave it back to them with interest. You can read the story. But it's like, if I took 10 things from you, I'm giving you back 30. That was, that was his, his response to the grace of Christ. Imagine Zacchaeus stories in your life and my life in 2024 because we associate with the lost. Hey, Bob, I'm coming to your house for lunch. Hey, whoever, I'm coming to your house for lunch. Whatever it may look like, whatever the, is, are there any Bobs in the room? Okay, I should, if I use New Testament um, Bible, well, Bible names, we should be safe, but um, I jumped to Bob. So, <laughs> hey, Zacchaeus. <laughs> there, there's something about how we are meant to handle and be around and be around people who are lost. And there are so many lost people around us. Anyone know a lost person? The rest of you really need to get out more. <laughs> or you're just not going to put your hand up no matter what I say. But, but if you don't know a lost person, you need to start knowing a lost person. You've got to broaden your circle. I know this sounds really strong, but it's absolutely the truth. Who did Jesus hang out with? He hung out with the lost. Of course he had. He had his disciples with him. Of course the early church was connected and they, they, they were a church again. They did not neglect gathering together. They gathered and they did life together. Of course they did that. But then they were out there in the world advancing the kingdom the rest of the time. Does that make sense? So if you don't know a lost person, get to know a lost person. Maybe it's in a school context. Maybe it's in your work context. Just, it's, it, you, you might, oh, I don't know where to start. Well, just start to have a conversation with someone. Just have a little conversation. Have a conversation that might lead to another conversation, that might need, lead to another conversation. And as those conversations progress, it might lead to, hey, you can even have a bride together. And they get to see who Jesus is in your life and in my life. Amen? Imagine in 2024, if all of us built a friendship with at least one person who doesn't know Jesus. That you, it might... Through that year, they might never land up in this environment. They might never land up coming with you to life group or whatever it may be. But it's your opportunity to sow into their life something of the seeds of the kingdom. 
And who knows, they might come to know Christ through your life or they might come to know Christ through somebody else one day, but you and I get to sow the seeds. Amen? That's a good word. Uh, even the sound system here behind me, the speakers were saying, yes, amen. They were. <laughs> Luke 19, talking about Zacchaeus, Jesus, it says, Jesus came to seek and save the lost. He sent you and me on the same mission, seek and save the lost. Turn to the person next to you and say, 2024 is a year to seek and save the lost. You might say, well, what's this got to do with wisdom? Everything. This is wisdom. It's not wisdom to only hang out with people who look like you. That's not wisdom. It's wisdom to get out there into the world and see Jesus make a difference in the lives of people. Amen? Thirdly, associate with the lowly. Uh, uh, just on the lost, don't, don't, don't spend time around legalists. They don't, 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 don't spend time around religious legalists who just want to, you know, control you, take away your fun, and get you to everyone look exactly the same, like a cookie cutter or whatever. Don't, don't spend time around those people. If you want to know more about legalists, go and read Galatians chapter 5. It's five, six chapters long. You can read it in an afternoon. Just read through and see what Paul had to say about legalists and see how intensely strong he was. It's stay walking in the grace of God. And associate with the lost, but don't associate with the legalists. Let the legalists be the legalists. Let them do what they do, but don't associate with them. Associate with the lost. Amen? Number three, associate with the lowly and not the loud mouths. Oh, no, I was stretching it there by getting to loud mouth. Associate with the lowly and not the loud mouths. What am I saying? I'm talking about associate with those the, 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 the humble, the, 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 those who are in lower places and lower stations in life. Associate with those people. Don't try and work your way up the ladder to be more like whoever it is. Don't try and compete with somebody else or try and get into certain crowds because they look like the in crowd that seems to have all the um, uh, whatever it might be, the, the, the influence and so on. Don't, don't, try and, don't try and get into those spaces. Get into the spaces where people are, there, there, there's, a lower, there's a lower station, there's a, there's, there's, there's a less than. Find yourself in those places. Associate with the lowly and not with the loud mouths. Don't, 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 try and, don't try and become that. This is encountering Jesus as a servant. Jesus was a servant. He did not come to be served, but to serve. Matthew 20, verse 28. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve. In 2024, if we're going to become a people of wisdom, we're going to encounter Jesus as a servant, as a savior, and as a teacher. We're going to associate with the lowly. We're going to associate with the learners, and we're going to associate with the lost. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. What's our attitude? Just thinking about that. Our attitude really should be this. Who can I serve today? Who can I reach out my hand to today? Who can I help to pull up? There's, there's, there are, there, it, it happens obviously in the non-Christian space, but it also happens in the Christian space where you're trying, to, you're trying to get yourself up to another level to kind of be with certain types of people. What we should be looking at as Christians is who can we give a hand up to? Does that make sense? Who can we give a hand up to? Who can we honor by bringing them up and by helping them? could be through a conversation, it could be through practical help, whatever it may be, but that we, we, we become a source of strength in their life to bring them to Jesus, to bring them to the one who didn't come to be served, but to serve. Amen? Galatians 6 verse 1 to 5 says this, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness, keeping watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. Bear one another's burdens. Associate with the lowly. Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something, when he is nothing, he deceives himself. But let each one test his own work and then his reason to boast will be in himself alone and not in his neighbor. For each will have to bear his own load. You are spiritual. Restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Our role in growing wisdom is to be able to step into the lives of people and say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to restore you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to lift you up. You, you, maybe you've made a really, really bad mistake. It's just the, the things that have come your way, the consequences of your situation are really, really intense. I'm going to step in and I'm going to restore you. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pick you up through gentleness. I'm going to see you restored so that you can become everything that God called you to be. That's who you and I are called to be. We're called to be those kinds of people, the restorers. Amen? You guys are very quiet to me today. <laughs> it's only going to get warmer for the next few months. Just letting you know. So uh, you might have to fill the swimming pool outside so you just keep going outside to, to cool off. Associate with the learner, not the learned, encountering Jesus as teacher. Associate with the lost, not the legalist. Let's encounter Jesus as savior. Associate with the lowly and not the loud mouths. Encounter Jesus as servant. If we can position ourselves in that way, we will be a people who grow in wisdom. Amen? If you would like to, I'd like to invite you to stand with me as we pray.